Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Tram Plane Reviews. Before we get started taking a look at this, the XF-39 Valkyrie, I'd just like to apologize if my voice quality is slightly different or if there is more background noise. I cannot afford to run air conditioning and it is beginning to get too hot in the summer and it means that I have to record only earlier in the day or later in the day or have to have like a fan on and even then sometimes it's not good enough and so there's there's a fan on in the background right now I should be able to edit out most of the noise but it might have a detrimental effect on the quality in which case I am sorry this is by Nan Na Na Nadini Nadini N A <clears throat> I can't speak uh, Nadini and I like how you did the very flat fuselage by having uh, these wing connectors on here. Like, I, I like how it's a very flat design. It's very interesting. He says it's an experimental super maneuverable fighter with very low wing loading and it's capable of carrying heavy payloads. It also possesses good high alpha characteristics. I don't know what that means to be honest, but uh, I think that means something to do with um, uh, high angle of attack maybe? Or, or very high speed perhaps? I'm not sure. I really am not sure. It says it's exceedingly durable, being able to fight and land after a wing is blown off. Nice. Disclaimer, bombs, missiles, and electronic warfare pods not included. So I will not be testing really the payload capacity on it. I will just fly it as it is. Actually, I will fly it as it is and then I will make myself a quick little thing that's like heavy things to put underneath and then I'll save that as like a sub-assembly so that I could use that in the future. So that would be cool. I would also like to point out that due to my crazy schedule, I'm actually recording this before I publish the uh, last plane reviews video, so I can't really respond to any feedback you have on there, but usually I respond to feedback in the form of comments a lot, so hopefully uh, you will get feedback there or have already gotten it. I just felt like I should point that out in case I have not said anything or I've been too busy and, you know, I haven't really said what's up. This, okay, action group one will enable an air brake. I'm guessing it's enabled, it's supposed to have the afterburners on all the time. Two doesn't seem to have done anything. I probably should have looked at the action groups, but I often forget, and uh, I didn't see anything describing it. Actually, I just realized, uh, since it was on Kerbal X, aha, apparently two enables flaps. Ah, yes, now I see that they are indeed enabled. Three has rudder air brakes, so it does, it does the, uh, like, turning both rudders inward or, well, another form would be outwards, but this one does inwards to do air brakes, and it has a Vulcan cannon that you can toggle on for, apparently. Like, I guess, just straight up, you can turn it on and off. Let's see, 9 for afterburners, and 0 for AI, AI flight computer enable, so, eh, that's pretty cool. Alright, so, let's see, it is flying very fast, it is performing very well, it's uh, doing about what I'd expect. I'm just gonna go ahead and enable the air brake, and that's not really doing much because we're at full afterburner going down. Of course, once we uh, turn it off, we start picking up a bit of speed. Well, a bit more speed. It's already going pretty darn fast. It's a very heavy fighter. It's a uh, very big fighter. Big meaning heavy, of course. Oh, this is a structural fuselage. Oh, that's interesting. So it's not actually, it's, it is big, but it's maybe not that heavy because a lot of this seems to be structural. Okay, there's fuel in the back, structural, 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 and structural. Interesting. Interesting. Does it have like a, yeah, it's got empty space in here and that's where it stores its ammo back there. That's kind of cool. I'm just imagining like you using this space in there for something. I don't know what, but in any case, let's go test it out loading something onto it. Alright, so this is kind of what I use as a standard fuel pod, and I'm using that to test payload capability by just having several of these. I'm basically going to put one under, one under the belly and two on each wing and fly it around and see how it performs like that. I'd like to point out that while I'm going to consider how it is right this moment as my standard form, uh, this of course can be adjusted lower or higher as needed. It's just with this particular craft, I have enough clearance where I feel like this is a comfortable position to have it at. Now, of course, because of the design of the construction on this, it's a bit hard to get the center pod placed perfectly, but uh, I'm doing the best I can. As for the wing pods, they're a little bit off, so I'm going to 
arrange them. Closer to center of mass is better for performance. Also, I do not want to have it like clipping with the landing gear though, so I'm giving it a little bit of extra room to be cautious. As for a difference in center of mass and center of lift, looks like I've placed them fairly centrally, so not too much of a difference there. That's probably not a word, or I've spelled it wrong, but I'm not particularly concerned. Let's go ahead and give it a fly like this. And of course, I forgot to pay attention to the action groups and ditched everything. Alright, this time, rearranging the stages, activating the engines, and we'll see how well she flies with this much extra mass put on. Now, I don't remember exactly how long it took her to get off the ground the first time around, although I'm imagining it was a bit quicker than that. Also, I imagine the uh, angle of attack was a bit better. But here we are in the air, still flying at a decent speed despite the huge amount of added mass. I'm actually taking a look at the aerodynamic overlay because I thought it would be a good idea to with these uh, angled parts on here to see what it says they're doing. Like, for instance, this angled, uh, whatchamacallit, Elevon 4 is doing a lot right there. It's also active, completely active, which I wouldn't expect it to be. I believe uh, Nad Nadini has... No, this has roll deactivated. There's a lot of control surfaces active for a lot of things, but it's not completely. And the thing is, we got up to like 260 meters per second easy while in flat flight, low level, low altitude. I'm going to go ahead and level off just a bit here. Uh, we're actually going to descend slightly, because I'm pretty much going level, and looks like we'll be able to easily get up to about 200 meters per second. So, there's definitely a reduction in performance, obviously, there always will be when you add payload. However, the reduction doesn't seem that bad, and I'm going to go ahead and now test maneuverability, which uh, seems to be affected a little, but not much. Let's go ahead and ditch all of those at once, and watch them slowly fall back down. Ah, oh, that's great colliding with each other a bit. Very nice. So yes, you can actually extend the fuel capacity on this thing quite a bit. You could probably even hook it up with the amount of fuel that I just did and extra weapons payload and it would still do quite fine. Next up, also by Nadini, the XF-42 Banshee, which has a very interesting design. Inverted, kind of, almost like an, it's, it's like a predator actually. I was going to say almost like an inverted tail, but I mean, it is a little bit, it, it reminds me of an F4's tail flipped upside down with these uh, extra strakes on the, uh, whatchamacallit, horizontal plane rather than the vertical, and uh, obviously bigger on the semi-horizontal planes than on the vertical. And of course, these are angled so much that they, that's why I'm calling them semi-horizontal because they're also vertical quite a bit. No description on here, however... On the Kerbal X page, it says it's an experimental stealthy air superiority flyer designed to complement the far more complex and costly XF-39, the one I just took a look at. It has an extremely large wing area for its size and is capable of pulling tight and clean maneuvers even at steep angles of attack. There's plenty of room for all manner of armament on the large main wings. The drawback is that while it is deadly in a dogfight, I lost my place in reading that. It lacks speed and cruise capability due to high drag and having to carry additional fuel to accommodate for sorties far from base. It features a pelican tail. Oh, I didn't know that's that's like a name for that. With an additional bottom... Oh, for the, the top bits like that, it's called a pelican tail. That's interesting. With an additionally mounted vertical stabilizer for additional yaw authority at low speeds and high angles of attack. Be wary of tail strikes. Yes, I was very wary of that while taking off because uh, I know better than to uh, pull up really hard, especially with something dipping that low. I I, uh, I think I learned that the hard way. No, I didn't, actually. I, I didn't have a problem with that much at all. I, I was uh, using a Predator. I was building a Predator. I uh, have a video, of, not of the Predator, but combat with the Predator, which was pretty fun to put together. Pretty fun to fly. But uh, yeah, a Predator drone has a similar kind of tail straight, tail straight, tail shape, which is pretty cool. There's different kinds of drones, though. I might be thinking of Reaper when I say Predator, because there's like there's several different kinds of drones, and I can't really... I haven't been able to really find good info on what kind is which. Like, when I look up images, I get, like, all sorts of different drones. When I look up Predator, I get all sorts of different ones when I look at Reaper. I'd have to look more into it to know what the hell I'm talking about. But as for how well this thing flies... Flies pretty well. Not quite as crazy as the other one, but uh, still pretty good. Definitely enjoying flying it. Ah yes, very nice. Can do some uh, nice aerobatics. Of course, I'm going at a very slow speed. Uh, that is one of the disadvantages of this, is that it is a little bit slow. But uh, it's alright. Just put another engine on it. 
Actually, it'd be kind of interesting to see a design that basically does that kind of concept to this. I don't remember what the other planes submitted by Nandi Nadini look like, but there will be two more of them right after this. And then, uh, I should have time for maybe one more. One more, uh, oh god. So it does not have a thrust weight ratio of one, I don't think. Also, if I was paying more attention to what I was doing there, I probably would have not have crashed like that, because I definitely could have pitched it a bit differently and flown off differently. But uh, I was kind of more focused on trying to say what I was trying to say. So we have the XF-53 Raven, which, hidden in this little bay, is a engine. Because this is a VTOL. It's an experimental VTOL general purpose light fighter designed to supersede the X-34 Yasha, which he did not submit, so I don't know what that's like. But the Raven can perform very easy takeoffs and landings using its single afterburning lift fan. It can even support up to one ton of additional cargo. More cargo can be added on if you're willing to sacrifice VTOL for short takeoff and vertical landing. The aircraft has surprisingly good handling qualities past its stall speed because the airframe is so short. The two vectoring engines have unusually strong control authority. Nice. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the action group so I can take a look at those. So I know how to fly it properly. It's got a little uh, AI put in there. It's got sidewinders by default, which is kind of cool. I like that. Very short wings, very small wings, very large landing gear on those swings. <laughs> oh wow, it's got a little, um, kind of made his own, uh, what do you call it, diverter in here? Oh no, it's a, oh, because it's a shot cone intake. Oh, that's cool. So he got the shot cone from a shot cone intake in there. So it's got extra intake as well. It's kind of interesting, these little um, Mark Zero liquid fuel, like, pod things just kind of stuck on there. I wonder if they're... I thought so. I was going to say, I bet they're hiding. I bet they're hiding something, and they're hiding the top of this, which I didn't notice was actually a panther. So we got a panther as our vertical engine. Interesting. I believe I used a panther on something that uh, you are not going to see yet, but uh, I'm working on the XH WAP that I was working on. It, it has, there's there's a variant of it that uses another panther in a similar manner to this, hint hint, VTOL. On a side note, you know, KSP 1.1 is coming out pretty soon. I don't know when, but I know it's fairly soon and I need to make a news video about it, but I just haven't had the time to do the research and get that all ready. So, you know, that's a thing. Of course, by the time you're watching this, maybe that's all changed. I don't know. That's the, uh, that's the only problem with recording things ahead of time. This fighter, though... I'm very much enjoying the way it moves. Alright, I'm taking a look at stuff. Okay, next weapon. So now I've selected aim nines. Fire, 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 fire. Awesome. Oh, and it's got a Vulcan. Oops. Oh, the system is not set up to uh, fire the Vulcan from the action group. However, you can of course click to fire. Oh dear. I just hit the stairwell. Nice. We. Oh. Scraping it along the ground. Oh, a piece of it hit the astronaut complex. And, uh, there goes mission control. I hope we didn't need that. Alright, this time around we're gonna do a VTOL flight, so space, space, five and seven. And now we are ready to take off with the vertical engine. Gonna go ahead and, yeah, full throttle it. Because why not? What's the worst that could happen? This also has air br not not air brakes, flaps, apparently, which I've just enabled to see what they look like. Okay, looks like they uh, do that just on the main wing, all of the flaps on the main wing. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, air brakes. I'm going to hit six for the main engines. Nope, that was the vertical engine. Shit. Okay, and six for the vertical engine. Five to close the bay. G for gear. Eight for f uh, countermeasures, just to see what they look like. Very nice. Nine for the afterburners, because it has them. It's a lot of action groups, and they're a lot different from the ones I typically use, so it's hard to remember what they are. Oh, gosh. I just, like, ran into my own missile after firing it. Good job, me. All right. Nine, five, seven, six, gear. Uh, what was it? Three for the air brake. All right. And we're now coming in for a vertical landing, well, vertical-ish landing. Theoretically vertical landing. How about I just go with theoretically vertical landing? Interesting, this has uh, less control authority in VTOL mode than I would have thought it did. That's interesting. 
All right, but we're pretty much coming to a stop, and we're just going to slowly fall down. All right, and touchdown. Very nice. Very nice to control. I like it. All right, six, seven, five, full throttle, nine for afterburners. Uh, one to... One was the wrong button. Three to lower that. Gear up. I think I've damaged a fuel tank with Kerbal Crash System. I need to update Kerbal Crash System. It's probably been updated and probably has maybe improved or fixed some of the stuff that I still experience. But yes, very nice. Very nice plane. All right, last from Nadini today, we have the XF-54 Broadsword, which is a heavy multi-role fighter slash bomber with interesting intake placement and a giant Gatling gun, which is also capable of VTOL. Interesting. It can, carries a considerable amount of fuel and is capable of reaching almost anywhere on the planet. And thanks to its VTOL capabilities, it can land almost anywhere as well, even at high altitude on mountaintops or in water. Very easy to fly. Flies perfectly straight with 4 times time acceleration and SAS enabled. Despite the easy handling, it can throw down some of the best air superiority fighters if it comes down to a dogfight. It's equipped with a heavy GAU-8. Yep and has flare and chaff dispensers. I had to scroll down a bit to keep reading. Mounted at the rear. Ah, there they are. And what was I reading? Missiles, bombs, drop tanks, and all that other stuff not included, of course. And now I'm trying to scroll back up the page so that I can look at the action groups. All right, what was I doing? What was I doing? I was gonna take a look at center of mass and center of lift, which did not work for some reason. There we go. Okay, well, here goes nothing. All right, here goes nothing. What was that? What? Cannot activate while stowed. Oh, oh! I just tried to activate the uh, engine that's inside there. All right, let's open the doors. Toggle lift fans. Calls them lift fans, but they're you know engines are the same as any other. Is it two in here? I think it's two in there. Oh, I can't see. Yeah, it looks like it's two in there. Well, we'll find out when I. Okay. KSP, please no. KSP. Wow, that was interesting. All right. Well. Let's uh, floor it, accidentally disable SAS, and then re-enable it. There you go. Yep, definitely two of them in there. Very nice. All right, so seven should be for main engines. All right, nine should be afterburners. I'm actually not looking at the uh, the controls. I'm just assuming based on his other craft designs, his other action group setups. And uh, yeah, fortunately, he's uh, practicing the idea of having the same designs the same design yes the same designs like the same uh, action group setups on multiple things oops oh the one and two are not set up though and eight is not set up yeah see on the previous one eight was uh countermeasures and uh one and two were for toggling and selecting weapons so let's go ahead and get the gao eight on very nice also very nice to see that it's working because I was trying to use it on, uh, I was trying to use it on my plane in the form of a gun pod, and that wasn't working for some reason, and I have no idea why. All right. Whoops. Interesting. I had a, a slight bit of lag there. Very nice. All right. I like it. I like it. It's like a. It's. It's. I think this is even. This is like even heavier than the first one. Well, obviously it is by the fact that the engines can't push it as fast, or at least they can't accelerate it as fast. And it's got those extra engines for the VTOL capability. So yeah, very heavy VTOL fighter, somewhat futuristic liking looking. I like it. And I think I'm about to crash it. Next up, and last for this video, is an F-86 Sabre. I'm not going to spend too much time looking at it. In fact, gosh, this looks awfully like one I've already reviewed. Hmm, has someone submitted one twice? It's got two advanced inline stabilizers clipped into each other, which, ugh, and some, okay. I mean, it's, it's all right. It's not the best. I've, I've seen better replicas already, so, you know, I'm not that enthused about it, but I'll give it a quick flight. Huh. <laughs> So, so much reaction wheel that it just, it just pulls up immediately. Oh, come on. What is this? Oh, you know what? I, I know what it is. See, these control surfaces, these Delta Deluxe winglets, they're not really designed for, like, airplanes. They're designed for stabilizing rockets. So they don't have a lot of control authority. So the stabilizers on this thing are what's allowing it to pull up at all. Basically. 
So, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure it would work without them. It just would not work very well at all. But with them, it works a bit better. And, oh, that's not what I meant to right-click. There we go. I meant to look at the cockpit. But yeah, so this, it doesn't even fly very well. Like, look at this. I'm pulling up as hard as I can, and I can't do anything. And it just, you know, one little maneuver, and it's just dead. So I'm sorry, but that's just not very good. Alright, so since that last plane was a bit of a bummer and I didn't want to end this on a down note, what you can see now is sped up footage of me building a quick little rover, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the claim on that first plane that it could be shot up and still fly quite well by building myself a little rover, I'm going to put a gun on it, launch it, launch the plane, shoot off one of the wings, and then try to fly it. And with this final bit of footage and experiment, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in space.